guys, so I'm here today to do a currently reading video. If you haven't seen these videos before, I usually talk about the books that I'm currently reading, which are often around three books. So at the moment I'm reading a book on my Kindle, I'm reading a physical book, and I'm listening to an audiobook. So I'm going to talk a little bit about all three of those books with you today and how I'm feeling at the point I'm at in them. So without further ado, let's get into the books. So the physical book I'm reading is The Last Children of Tokyo by Yoka Tawada. So this is originally written in Japanese and translated by Margaret Mitsutani and published by Portobello Books. So that's my bookmark. It's also a stunning cover. I know that's not why we're here, but let's just appreciate this for a moment. Great book design. This is my first book by this author, although I know her book The Memoirs of a Polar Bear was quite popular on booktube maybe last year which is also published by Portobello Books, I believe. And I have to say, in general, actually, I'm not that well-read when it comes to Japanese literature. Off the top of my head, I can't really think of any other <laughs> Japanese novelists that I've read. But I'm enjoying expanding my reading and trying literature from over there. And this is such a weird but intriguing story. So it's a novella. It's about 140-odd pages. And it's slow moving in that it's not like plot motivated, it's not like a fast paced plot where you need to know what happens next. It's very much building up this world in which the characters live, exploring a strange, surreal, potential future and from the blurb I guess there are going to be a few more plot points to come but I'm actually past halfway, I'm on page like 81 and some of the stuff in the blurb hasn't really happened yet so I'd sort of ignore the blurb to be honest <laughs> or at least like the second paragraph of, of the blurb I think it, it suggests it's more of like a science fiction plot fueled book than it is it's a really unique, interesting world and character study um, set in the future, that's what I would describe it as and it's set in Japan in a future in which all countries on the planet have sectioned themselves off from one another. There's now no interaction between, say, Japan and any neighbouring countries or any countries further afield. They don't use phones anymore, so they can't even phone people in other countries. They all live in their own countries with the idea that each country has to solve its own problems before it can then interact again with the rest of the world. So it's set in Japan and we don't really know what's going on outside of Japan and we follow our protagonist who is called Yoshiro and he's an elderly man living in Japan so in this future the elderly are actually probably the fittest members of society. Um, it doesn't really look like they're going to die anytime soon, he's over 100 years old, he's still going out for runs, um, he's you know fit, healthy, happy. Um, and he takes care of his great grandson who is the most recent generation in Japan and the most recent generation are incredibly sickly and there's not a lot of hope for future generations. Um, it almost seems as if the elderly are, are going to outlive um, these, these new generations but he and his grandson live together and just sort of go about their everyday life and that's kind of what's been happening. I've just sort of been following the everyday life of Yoshiro and also, more recently, the bit that I've just kind of read, he recounts a bit more of his past about his daughter and his grandson, his grandson being the father of his great-grandson who he takes care of and um, kind of explaining to you why he's the one in charge of his great-grandson, why they're the only two left together and uh, why the rest of his family isn't there. I won't tell you why, but so he's sort of been explaining that to you. You've been learning more about his past, which has also contributed to the world building. So you're very much learning about this futuristic world from Yoshiro's perspective and his experiences. Um, and it's really, really difficult to guess how far in the future this book is set. Is it about 100 years? And, like, I honestly have no idea, but it's so, so weird and wonderful. And there's definitely some really unsettling imagery, but there's also some really, really creative speculations about the future like the author has gone into so much detail in such a small book to create this world and it's so fascinating and you just enjoy reading it to learn about that it's beautifully written so I imagine the translation has been done really really well but I honestly don't really know what's going to happen the, the blurb like I said kind of indicated that something is going to happen and I'm still kind of waiting for that to happen but I'm enjoying the process of getting there and I think that's more what it is it's more of an enjoyable interesting 
speculative future read as opposed to like plot 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 but that's completely fine because it's beautifully written and you get absorbed in this world and just learning about it and all the little details gradually it's so so interesting I thought she's done a really good job of that but yeah so I'm intrigued to see what does kind of happen in the next like 60 or 70 pages but I'm also reading a book on my Kindle which is a sequel. So the book I'm reading on my Kindle is Veins of Magic by Emma Hamm and this is the sequel to Heart of the Fae which is a Beauty and the Beast retelling. So I would say that these two books together retell the main plot of Beauty and the Beast although there's so much more detail, so much more world building it feels like a very unique concept, not just a straightforward Beauty and the Beast retelling, but some of the things in Beauty and the Beast that you expect to happen haven't quite happened yet, and I would guess that they might happen in the sequel, but I'm not sure yet. I'm about 60% of the way through, so anything is up for grabs, really. It's focused very heavily on the Fae. So our protagonist in these two novels is Sorka, who is a healer and a midwife and she's been brought up in a brothel um, and she sort of serves as the midwife and helps with things like contraception for the women working in the brothel. However, her father and all of her sisters, who are the other women that live in the brothel, um, although they're not biologically related, um, they're her family, have come down with this blood beetle plague which is sort of swarming the land and nobody knows how to cure it. So Sorka, who still sort of adheres to the old ways of life and acknowledges the fairies, although many other people don't anymore, sort of goes to the fairies to ask for help in curing this plague and she's sent on a quest to this fairy isle that only appears every few years and she has to go there and meet this fairy called Amen and ask for his help and that's the sort of initial premise and the first book very much left on like a cliffhanger there's like a big dramatic moment things happened and I had to go straight into the sequel because I needed to know what would happen next it very much felt like I needed the full story and it's a duology so I will get that satisfaction at the end of this story thankfully and I'm really enjoying this it's just like really fun, fey, mystical, magical fantasy. Um, it does, does not shy away from the dark side of the fey at all. Um, it really works in different fey folklore with the seely and then the unseely. It's, you know, very rich in, in folklore detail when it comes to um, building this fey world. It's also very much a romance. Um, it's based on Beauty and the Beast to you, as you can probably guess. Sorka is the beauty character and she ends up having a relationship with somebody you could count as the Beast character, but it's nice. You see the relationship develop um, and I'm, I'm intrigued to see what will happen, but there is definitely a focus on romance, but I enjoy that. I found that I actually really like fantasy with a romance subplot or, you know, equally as important main plot, I, I, something I enjoy in a fantasy novel and I'm enjoying it in this series. But yeah, I'm hoping that I just find all the satisfaction I want in the ending of this book. Right now it could go anyway to be honest, so we will see. I'm really really enjoying it. I think I'm actually going to be kind of sad that it's only a duology because it's a series I think I could have kept reading, um, although Emma Ham has written other books so I'll definitely be checking those out afterwards. Uh, if you're interested in more fairy, fae fantasy books, I did a whole video on fairy book recommendations so you can check that out. I will link it down below. But the last book I am listening to, I just started on audiobook and that is Brave by Rose McGowan. So this is Rose McGowan's autobiography. Uh, Rose McGowan, for me, I was first introduced to Rose McGowan through Charmed. Uh, Rose McGowan is an actor and she played one of the central characters from season four to season eight of Charmed, which is when it finished. One of the reasons that she's written this book and one of the reasons she's actually been in the media most recently is because she played a large part in sort of instigating the backlash against sexism and sexual abuse in Hollywood and the exposure of Harvey Weinstein. So she's been very much a presence in the in the news and on social media in the past few years. You've probably heard of her through that if you hadn't seen her in anything before. Um, but 
she has been a very brave woman, like the title suggests. Um, she has sort of gone against the backlash and come out and um, objected to all of this sort of sexual abuse going on in Hollywood um, against female actors and kind of the manipulation and coercion that they've faced in their careers and that she herself has faced. So when I saw that this autobiography was on BookBeat, which is an audiobook app I use that you can um, listen to as many audiobooks you want in a month, I thought I would give it a listen because um, I'm just, I'm interested to hear her story and I've already learned so much more about Rose McGowan than I knew before. For example, she was actually born into a cult in Italy um, as a child and was raised in her early years in, in this cult. Um, Children of God, I think the cult is called. And I had no idea about this, so I'm learning all about her background and um, as it goes on, as she's hinting already very much so, she's going to be sort of talking about Hollywood and the cult of Hollywood and kind of um, her experience with the cult of Hollywood and how it impacted her life and how she sort of escaped that and managed to sort of reclaim herself and stop creating a narrative of herself for the public. And it's it's a very no holds barred account, I can already tell. There is like a lot of aggression and swearing, and but it's very passionate and I can see why that tone is necessary. It feels very real and just like this account of her emotions and her feelings and her experiences. And I think that's really raw and beautiful and I'm kind of glad that it's written in that way. It feels very personal. Honestly, I feel like I've already learned so much about Rose McGowan's life that I had no idea about before and I'm not even that far into it. I've maybe listened to about an hour and it's six and a half hours long, so I, d I don't know what I'm going to learn next, but I'm, I'm excited to get more into the Hollywood aspect of it, which is sort of what this book is it is focused on, although it is her autobiography so she's starting early on, but you know, it's sort of centred on the massive part that Hollywood's played in her life, sort of how she got there, how it changed her life and how she sort of reclaimed herself more recently and I imagine she'll talk a little bit more about that exposure of the sexual abuse in Hollywood. I'm intrigued, I don't know exactly what's going to happen but I think it's going to be quite a raw and emotional story from what I've listened to so far. Quite intense but um, yeah, I wasn't quite sure when I started listening to it. I thought, hey, you know what, it's here, I'll give it a listen. I like Rose McGowan. Um, I've always liked Rose McGowan. So I wanted to learn more about her and it's really nice to learn about more about her as a person and um, sort of you know, not shy away from, from this, this side of things. So I'm actually, yeah, enjoying it. I feel like enjoying is always a weird word to use for a book that's so kind of harrowing, but I am enjoying it more than I actually thought. I was a little bit hesitant going into it, a little bit nervous going into it, but I'm definitely hooked and I'm gonna keep going. But those are the books I am currently reading or listening to. I mean, all pretty positive feelings, nothing I'm planning on DNFing at the moment. But I'd love to hear from you if you are reading, but I'd love to hear from you if you've read or would like to read any of the books I've talked about in this video. I like just the casual, chatty atmosphere of these currently reading videos, so please do leave your comments down below and start a conversation. But until next time, happy reading and I'll see you all again soon. Bye!